Now that we've talked about what grids do, provide the underlying structure for your flex section, let's dig deeper into the various containing elements. They're called containers and flex boxes. Both have a very specific use and I'll run through them here. So I've got my grid on screen, it's a three column grid, and I wanna go ahead and add content to it. I'm gonna use a little plus icon on this quick selection tool. And it says, what do I wanna add? So I can add an image button text, but you don't wanna add content right to the grid. You really want content included in one of these two flex elements, either a container or a flex box. So first let's start with a container. So if I click that, I've got a container on the page. Now the most important thing to note about a container and the key difference between it and a flex box is that items within a container can be designed freeform. So what does that mean? Well, let's just drag our container out to be roughly uh, two columns, looks good. And within the container, we're going to add some content. So I'm gonna add an image. Okay, and let's just select something here. So there's our image, and I'm going to just scale the image down and notice that the image is within this container and I can move it around within. Now I'm going to add a, another image into the container and I'm gonna scale it down and I'm gonna drag it and just kind of maybe drop it on this corner and select a new image. There you go. So a container is best for free form layouts like this. Let me add a new button, for example, and I'll size the button down and maybe the button's going to sit on this corner. So you're not going to achieve a layout like this if you're stuck working within a rigid grid. That's where a container is going to come in handy. And one of the main things you'll notice with a container is that content stays relative to the other elements within the container. So what does that mean? If I change my breakpoint size, as the content scales down, it's essentially staying relative to the rest of the content. Now, if I didn't use this container, let me show you what would have happened. So I'm gonna jump back to my desktop or main breakpoint, and let's just actually move this content out of the container. I'm gonna drop it right on the grid, which I said before in a previous video, not always a great idea. And I'll show you why here. So even though it looks like I'm achieving the same layout, let me delete this container out. So I've achieved a similar layout. Watch what happens to that layout as I scale between breakpoints. You'll see as I scale down to this breakpoint, which is the mobile breakpoint, the content has become completely disconnected from the rest of it. And that's because it's not contained within a container element. So think of a container as a grouping tool. It's something you're going to place on the grid and drop items into to keep them all together and keep them relative to one another. So let's delete these items off the page. Okay, so you're probably asking yourself, why do I need to use anything but a container? It's so flexible and I can drag items anywhere I want. And that's also one of the weaknesses of a container is if I need content that's beautifully arranged on a grid, it's a little bit more difficult. And that's why we have another containing element called a flex box. So I'm gonna drop a container back into this grid. Let's size it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to add an image to it. Let's say I'm making a bit of a gallery type of system here where I want images sitting within rows and columns. So there's my first image. I can duplicate that and move this over for my second. But as you go ahead and build this layout, you're going to run into slight sizing differences. So for example, I'm, ha I'm having a lot of trouble aligning these three items perfectly. We do have some kind of snap to grids, but you know, what's the gap in between these? Are they matching? So if I'm gonna go ahead and build a big layout like this, I do not wanna use a container. I wanna use a flex box. Now this can be made a little bit easier within a container because you can add rows and columns to a container. And on the right side here, this may have been closed. If you open up layout and customize layout, we can actually add say three columns to the container and we could add two rows and that will help us arrange our content within. But it's still a little bit better to use a flex box 
when you're creating content like this because it just keeps everything together and you'll find that throughout all of your different breakpoints, things just arrange more beautifully and without you having to manually tweak them. So just remember, containers are the most flexible layout tool and allow you to do freeform design, but where they fall short is if you need content that is beautifully aligned, beautifully structured, that's what using a Flexbox is for. Let's take a look at a Flexbox in our next video.